All right, guys, so I keep getting requests to do a video on rhodiola, so let's do it. This video is sponsored by Skillshare. All right, so rhodiola is in a class of herbal compounds uh, that are known as adaptogens that through various mechanisms are able to lower the effects of stress on the body. Now, uh, globally speaking, the three most popular uh, adaptogens are one, ashwagandha, two, uh, panax ginseng, and then the third one is, uh, you guessed it, rhodiola rosea. And now all of these have very specific mechanisms that they work on within uh, the context of the body. And and arguably speaking, ashwagandha is the most potent of the three. However, uh, Panax Ginseng and Rhodiola are fairly potent in their own regards. And so let's go ahead and jump into the top five benefits of Rhodiola Rosea, as well as the mechanisms of action so that you guys can kind of uh, get an idea of how Rhodiola interacts with the body. Now, the first and primary mechanism of Rhodiola is that it has the capacity, according to a handful of studies, to uh, clinically reduce stress and anxiety. Now specifically, it's been shown to reduce not only stress and anxiety, but also the anger and confusion that is associated with that stress and anxiety. And when you look at all the other health benefits of taking rhodiola, they all seem to kind of stem from this um, initial benefit of being able to reduce the effects of stress on the body. Now, before we go on any further in the video, I do think it is super important to state here that stress and anxiety are aren't necessarily bad things. And so technically, uh, stress and anxiety are ancient natural adaptations to um, encountering stressors in life. And now the two primary ones uh, that I can think of would be one, a lack of resources. And so when an individual is lacking the resources that they need in order to do what they feel they need to do in life, whether that be food or water or shelter, uh, or whatever it might be, stress is naturally heightened so that your body and your brain and your central nervous system are in a better state in order to seek out the resources that an individual needs. And the second uh, stressor that people typically encounter, whether that be like ancient humanity or even modern humanity, would just be simply facing a physical threat or what you perceive to be a physical threat. And so when your brain recognizes that you're encountering these stresses, um, it begins to recruit as many resources as as possible and tends to uh, start pumping out things like cortisol and dopamine and adrenaline in order to kind of mount up a defense against an immediate threat or uh, to kind of recruit energy and resources and mental capacity in order to solve uh, the problem of the lack of resources that you may be encountering. So as you can tell, this isn't necessarily a bad thing. And historically speaking, this is actually necessary for human survival. Now, where this starts to become a bad thing is when these stressors and these threats and these lack of resources become continual stressors and you begin to live in a state of chronic stress, not just temporary stress. This is where this becomes an issue. Our brains and our bodies weren't developed in order to handle that level of chronic stress. And so when this happens, there's usually three ways in order to kind of interrupt this cycle of chronic stress. And and one is through either eliminating the stress, so eliminating the lack of resources, eliminating the impending threat. But a lot of times this isn't possible, and so there is a second way in order to kind of deal with this uh, level of chronic stress, and that's by developing a mental framework to handle the specific stresses of life. And then the third way that's possible in order to kind of interrupt this cycle of chronic stress is through pharmacological means, whether that be through natural or synthetic means, and this is where things like rhodiola come in really handy. Now, there are two primary mechanisms by which rhodiola is able to reduce the effects of stress on the body, and the first one is by inducing the secretion of a little-known uh, neuropeptide called neuropeptide Y. Now, neuropeptide Y is an endogenous anxiolytic um, neuropeptide that gets released in response to stress, so this means that whenever you're encountering a stress on top of your body pumping out a bunch of cortisol which is your stress hormone and a bunch of uh, dopamine and norepinephrine which are more of kind of like your stress um, and motivational neuro 
neurotransmitters. It also pumps out a bunch of neuropeptide Y, which is more of like a relaxing uh, neuropeptide. And so this decreases blood pressure increases relaxation. And from my assumption, your body does this in order to kind of calm you down a little bit so that you're able to properly focus and assess the problem that you're facing so that you're able to better solve the problem. And so by rhodiola being able to stimulate the production of neuropeptide Y, uh, there is a marked uh, kind of level in relaxation and kind of focus um, and just a overall reduction in levels of stress. Now, rhodiola has also been shown to stimulate the production of serotonin in several different brain regions. And so serotonin, uh, a lot of you guys know this by now, that serotonin is kind of like your more calming uh, neurotransmitter and kind of gives you feelings of satisfaction and security and calmness. And so by rhodiola being able to both, again, stimulate the secretion of neuropeptide Y as well as the production of serotonin, there's kind of like this dual-pronged uh, ability of rhodiola to induce and reduce the levels of stress. Now, the second health benefit of rhodiola is kind of downstream of the first benefit is that rhodiola also seems fairly uh, potent at being able to reduce fatigue. Now, in this study in particular, rhodiola was studied in a handful of high school and college age students, and they found that rhodiola was associated with a fairly significant reduction in not just stress levels, but also fatigue levels that eventually actually led to to roughly 10% better scores um, on end of the year examinations. Now, again, to kind of harp on the association between stress and fatigue, uh, stress can be a good thing. However, when it turns into chronic stress, uh, this begins to take a toll on not just your brain and your central nervous system, but also uh, your body as well, and will eventually lead to fatigue. And so by uh, rhodiola being able to interrupt uh, that stress response to some degree, it also has the capacity to uh, reduce the symptoms of fatigue as well. Um, that can also lead to the third benefit that we're going to talk about today, which is uh, rhodiola's ability to improve cognition as well. Now, specifically, rhodiola has been shown to improve mental fatigue involving complex perceptive and cognitive cerebral functions uh, such as associative thinking, short-term memory, calculations, and the ability of concentration and uh, the speed of audio-visual perception. And that study in particular was performed actually in physicians that were working the night shift. And so they were obviously kind of encountering the chronic stress of having to put their body through the stress of staying up at night as opposed to the daytime, which is what your body naturally wants to do. And so rhodiola here, secondary to both reducing uh, chronic stress as well as fatigue, was also fairly effective at improving cognitive function as well. Now, the fourth health benefit that I want to talk about real quick uh, is rhodiola's ability to improve mood as well. Now, in this study in particular, there was a fairly impressive ability of rhodiola to decrease depressive symptoms uh, by between 30 and 50%. And so it's not super clear if the improvements in mood that are seen in this study, as well as some of the other studies, would also be shown um, in healthy individuals. However, rhodiola does seem to be a fairly consistent compound at reducing the symptoms of fatigue and stress-related depression. And so if you are one of those individuals that are experiencing fatigue and stress-related depression, uh, rhodiola would definitely kind of be at the top of my list of, of compounds that I would be taking in order to kind of mitigate the effects of that stress. Now, the mechanism here uh, seems to be fairly connected to the other um, mechanisms that have already been mentioned. How However, I do want to mention another mechanism that might also be at play here, and that is that rhodiola also seems to increase the protein content of a very specific uh, serotonin receptor known as the 5-HT1A receptor, which is a receptor that uh, serotonin binds to. And when serotonin binds to this receptor, it decreases anxiety, uh, decreases aggression, and increases sociability, which are all kind of depressed-related symptoms as well. And so on top of rhodiola's ability to increase neuropeptide Y and increase serotonin kind of just in general, it also has the ability to upregulate the protein content of this specific uh, receptor, which also kind of lends to its mood improving effects. 
Now, the fifth health benefit, as always, is uh, rhodiola's ability to just improve overall health. And uh, there have been a handful of studies that have shown rhodiola's ability to uh, both reduce inflammation, possibly increase exercise performance, possibly reduce the effects of aging, which I think is interesting, um, possibly reduce the effects of oxidation and increase antioxidant capacity, as well as improve heart health. And so again, I always like to throw that one in there simply because when it comes to uh, consuming compounds, I'm always uh, kind of in the game of finding specific herbal compounds and natural compounds uh, that don't just maximize and improve one area of health, but also um, improve several areas of health. Now, when it comes to my personal take on rhodiola, I don't personally like it that much. I don't like the way it makes me feel. I know it has great uh, research and evidence on its ability to reduce levels of stress. However, I personally find that ashwagandha is far more potent for my personal biochemistry. However, there are tons of people that absolutely swear by rhodiola. And so I'm not writing it off by any means, but I am saying that uh, when it comes to choosing specific herbal compounds and specifically adaptogens, um, ashwagandha, rhodiola, and panax ginseng, I think I think it is worth testing out these three compounds to figure out which one works best for you. And so if you guys do me a favor and comment down below which one you guys like best, I would love to kind of um, just kind of gather some data on what you guys are personally taking and what you guys find to be effective at lowering stress. All right, before I let you guys go, I do want to give another huge shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of classes on anything from entrepreneurship to graphic design to even things uh, like minimalism, which is actually a class that I'm currently taking by Aaron Broyle on um, minimalism called Everyday Minimalism, which has actually been helping me out a ton on um, um, helping me to kind of hone in my nutrition and supplementation stack um, and kind of helping me to ask the tough questions on is this necessary to uh, maximize this area of my life but um, it's been hugely helpful. I highly recommend it. And the cool thing is that it is completely ad-free and only cost uh, $10 a month. And the really cool thing is that the first 1,000 subscribers uh, that go down to the description below and click on that link get a premium uh, free membership trial. And so you guys definitely don't want to miss out on this opportunity. And again, uh, that link is in the description below. But other than that, that is it for this video, guys. As always, um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Thank you so much.